August 19th, St. John Utes, Confessor. The Christ-like role of seeking and saving that which is lost is particularly the role of the good priest, and the outstanding among many saintly priests is St. John Utes, who was born in Re, France, in the year 1599. In his youth he made brilliant studies at the College of Caen that was conducted by the Society of Jesus, and he intended to become a member of the parochial clergy. He was attracted, however, to the Congregation of the Oratory, founded by Cardinal Baruli, which had for its aim the perfection of the priestly life. His first solemn mass after ordination was sung on Christmas Day in the year 1625. Some years later, an epidemic of plague broke out in Normandy, and St. John volunteered to go to work among the sufferers of his own countryside. He spent two months ministering spiritually and medically to the sick, dying, and endangered. He was then sent to the Oratory of Caen, where he remained quietly till a visitation of plague to that city in the year 1631 called him out again. For the next ten years, St. John was chiefly engaged in giving missions and gaining much experience for the work which he was afterwards to undertake. From the pulpit he went to the confessional, for, as he said, the preacher beats the bushes, but the confessors catch the birds. He preached in his lifetime one hundred and ten different missions. Among the matters that troubled St. John during the course of his mission was the difficult position of women and girls who were reclaimed by God's grace from a life of sin. For a time he tried to deal with the problem by finding for those penitents temporary homes with religious people, but this arrangement was inadequate, and in the year 1641 a house was rented as a refuge for penitent women until honest work could be found for them. But soon he saw that it was necessary for the work to be in the hands of a religious congregation, and offered it to the visitantes of Khan who accepted it. Another profound interest of St. John's was the formation and sanctification of the clergy. He had been thinking for a long time of educating suitable young men for the ministry of the church, Earnestly asking for divine assistance, with a brave spirit, he most regretfully withdrew from the Oronations with whom he had lived for twenty years. Associating five priests with himself in the year 1643, he founded the Congregation of Jesus and Mary, known today as the Eudist Fathers. He then opened the first seminary in Caen, and a great many others followed immediately in Normandy and Brittany. It was inevitable that the sparks of zeal which caught from the sacred heart of the great high priest should lead him to encourage the devotion to the hearts of Jesus and Mary. He labored to promote devotion to the heart of flesh united to the divinity which symbolized the eternal love of Jesus. He actually established and had approved by Rome the liturgical devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In this way, he was a forerunner in God's providence of the work of St. Margaret Mary. His great book, The Admirable Heart of the Most Holy Mother of God, has stimulated much true piety to Our Lady. He was also the author of many excellent treaties and labored as an apostolic missioner to the very end of his life, preaching the gospel in many villages, towns, and cities, and even in the royal court. After his death in the year 1680, as he became illustrious by many miracles, Pope Pius X added him to the list of the blessed. As he still shone forth with new signs and wonders, Pope Pius XI, in the holy year of 1925, placed him among the saints. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest, that he send forth laborers into his harvest. Pray for the seminaries of the church, for the students in them, and for the priest teaching there.